Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE. Covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman here at the OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver with my co-host, John Troyer. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Charles Furlan, who's the Vice President of Business Development at Nuage Networks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so the OpenStack show, we're always talking about the maturity of it, where customers are g going with it. Uh, you're in business development, so yeah. one, of the, one of the things we were discussing from the keynote this morning is the telcos and the service providers and who's doing what and you know, who makes up that environment. So right. give us your viewpoint, what you're seeing uh, as to you know, where, where some of the real action is uh, in, this, in this marketplace. Fair enough, we've been talking about NFV, for example, for many years, yeah. as you know. Uh, but I would say it's probably since the second half of 2016 that we've started to see some significant large deployment. And the service, providing, service provider paying attention to building up a telco cloud, to host their VN, uh, NAV applications, yeah. right? Um, so, so really from the second half of 2016, 2017, we've seen uh, massive deployments of OpenStack with a service provider, and, and a lot of them to host applications to serve their um, branch office customers. Yeah. So that's, that's a, another motivation for them to deploy this. Yeah, so, so, so Charles, you know, we, we've talked to the AT&T, Verizon, yeah. you know, Deutsche Telekom's up there, all these big ones, but I look at it and say, is this an opportunity of, 20 global you know, you know, telcos, or is do we go down to some of the MSPs, CSPs, however you want to call those service providers? The regional you, ones. You know, the, some of the regional ones that sure. maybe aren't as much telcos, or are they, wh wh where's that line? What do you see as kind of the, 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 the TAM, if you will, uh, for, for this space? Obviously the uh, large service provider will have a piece there, but we see a lot of regional customer consuming services from a local provider, right? They do have either for language reasons, for uh, regulation uh, and, and, and governance. So we see a lot of them consuming services from a local service provider. So, and OpenStack sort of became the building block of these NFV infrastructure for the service provider. Yeah, it, it's interesting. We, we actually just had a, a, an infrastructure as a service company from Australia okay. on, and I said, you, you know, you look at their website, it doesn't say OpenStack anywhere. It's okay. Okay. They provide cloud offerings, so it's one of the things, there's all these telcos and service providers that use it, but it's not like they're like, we're your preferred distribution of OpenStack, it's just part of the plumbing underneath. The use cases that, that are addressed by, by OpenStack and served by OpenStack really fits well in a lot of the telco space right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a lot of growth uh, for virtual private cloud, we've seen a lot of growth for uh, dynamically deploying application, having an application residing in the data center or moving closer to the users at the edge, for example, and these are sort of the, the use cases that Nuage and OpenStack address pretty well. Well, that's an interesting pivot point, right? Uh, I understand as an enterprise technologist why software-defined networking is important, right? And right. it's important in your stack, it's got to be important inside of an open, open stack. but can you talk a little bit about some of these use cases, like I hadn't really thought about SD-WAN and how that, that really, and what architectures and deployments uh, would really kind of mean that they would, you'd need to deploy that with some. And, and that, that's a good point because uh, really I think SD-WAN served as the catalyst for the service providers to start paying attention to deploying an NFV infrastructure. Before that, there was an interest, there was a motivation. However, SD-WAN offered a dynamic, flexible, agile, branch office connectivity that allows them to dynamically insert value-added services. So yes, SD-WAN provide a connectivity between the branch office, but really what is, uh, the service provider are going after is offering application firewall, DDoS services, or URL filtering, and all of these applications residing in the data center. And all of a sudden, they say, hold on, I cannot have an SD-WAN solution disjoint from my data center OpenStack uh, deployment. And this is where uh, the Nuage actually served as a connecting to both environment. But also, this is what served as a catalyst. The SD WAN deployment served as a catalyst for for them to start deploying a dynamic infrastructure in the data center. Yeah. So, so Charles, just on the SD WAN piece itself, we've seen a lot of activity, a yep. bunch of acquisitions uh, in that market. What what differentiates Nuage uh, in in this space? Well, fair enough. We've seen these acquisitions as a complement to the strategy that we have taken over the past five years, paying off. We are from the get go started to have an end to end SD WAN solution. So it's not just about connecting branch office together. It's not about just connecting application in the data center. It's actually connecting the users in the branch office, 
with the applications in the data center or in the public cloud. And what differentiates us the most is that we have the exact same platform, the same SDN solution, end-to-end, -end, to connect branch office, programming branch routers, or programming virtual switches in the data center or bare metal physical servers. So that is perhaps Noir's single most biggest differentiator is the capability to have that single policy, that single SDN framework from the users in the branch to the data center or public cloud. All right, you, you mentioned bare metal. Uh, yeah. I, I remember it was funny. When, when the project came out for bare metal, of course, it's called ironic because most people, can, when OpenStack started, it was it's a a good given <laughs> that it was virtualized environment. Of course, yeah. today, we've got containers starting to go up the stack uh, with, with Kubernetes, so we understand uh, why bare metal's there. What, what are you seeing in that space and, and, and what, what kind of, what are you hearing from your customers? So we, uh, we have a lot of traction with uh, ironic, actually. It's ironic, but we do, <laughs> and, and uh, we did that at, uh, Actually, in OpenStack Sydney in uh, November, we did a co-presentation with Fujitsu, who deployed our K5 infrastructure using Nuage Networks and Ironic integration. To roll out on top of that is flexible. You can put a platform as a service; they can do whatever they want on top of it. But the bare metal provisioning is somewhere we is a, we have a couple of large accounts that have deployed this globally. Yeah. Okay. Are you working with the Kata containers uh, that they have here? And whether you are or not, would love to hear kind of the security story uh, when we talk things, everything from bare metal and containers and uh, what, what you're doing with OpenStack. And that's that's perhaps the other the biggest differentiator that we have is because we're able to have the single networking policies from a container to or programming the network of a container or a KVM, VM, or Hyper-V or VMware, we have the single, the single SDN platform and we're able, to, we see all the, therefore we see all the traffic in the data path. And we're able to index this into a Elasticsearch database, right? And, and, and uh, create an index and set, allow the users to create some thresholds. And that is what is perhaps the newest thing at Nuage is the capability now to say, hey, once those thresholds are crossed, why don't we reprogram the network dy dynamically? So near real, term, in re near real time, we're actually able to take an action to reprogram the network based on some live feed network in information that we're receiving from the, the various element that we have programmed either in the branch office or in a container level. Okay, so today Kata containers is not something that you're involved with, or I, I, I didn't quite, the Kata containers from uh, the, the, the new high level project from the, the OpenStack Foundation. I, I don't know right now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry yeah, about that, no, no, yeah. No mm -hmm. but, it, but your customers are using container technology. We are using containers, we're Kubernetes. working obviously Docker and various mm -hmm. others. We uh, have an integration with uh, Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we provide a CNI that absolutely involved there, and this is how a lot of our customers are using us right now. And the customers we're talking about, these would often be service providers, is that, is that correct? In the context of uh, containers and Kubernetes, it would mainly be on the enterprise. Okay. A lot of an agile type of development, uh, where they want to have, a, there's a lot of developers and they want to have the networking program and the same life cycle as the application project mm -hmm. is rolling out. And having the micro segmentation, meaning that we are able to isolate each one of the project from one another. So in, if one gets contaminated, the other one doesn't. And uh, so, so this is where a lot of the con Kubernetes and deployment has been on the, um, on the large enterprise, I would okay, say. Okay, that, that makes sense, because I'm trying to, as a, as a person outside the telecom industry, but, but following kind of the enterprise and, and OpenStack, it's interesting to see this vision of the service providers who are not dumb pipes, certainly, but through OpenStack and these, these uh, the NFE and the services they're able to provision with folks like Nuage, exactly. you know, able to provide services. So just trying to figure out where the line, you know, maybe you could draw us a picture of, you know, what what the modern service provider will be able to provide mm -hmm. versus what's still left then for the at the enterprise level. Depending on which market size analysis, uh, analyst you're looking at, you Always know, depends, the yeah. VPN connectivity will be, it, it varies between two to six to eight to 12, it's a relatively contained small market compared to the application, the managed applications, right? Uh, managed security, that's tenfold that, that market space. So really, as you said, the, the objective here of the service provider is not to, to become a, a dumb virtual pipe, and the ability to dynamically insert some value-added services over the top. And this is what having an agile as the WAN now gives them the capability to say, hold on a second, I can now start serving a value-added application because my dynamic network is available now. And this is, this is what is fueling a lot of the OpenStack deployment right now in the data center. Yeah, Charles, one of the yeah. discussions we've been looking at the last couple of years is there's OpenStack and then there's containers and Kubernetes yeah. and everything. How do you see those go together? What are you hearing from customers? Uh, how does new I don't think they're the mutually world? exclusive, to be yeah. honest. Well, that, that, that's the general discussion here, but I'd love to hear some real world. So, yeah. 
in the context of Ironic, as we just mentioned, a yeah. lot of the time the bare metal servers are actually deployed using OpenStack, and what goes on top of it is actually Kubernetes, right? And this is very common, and it gives that isolation, or it's deploying a virtual machine running a past platform in there, right? So, so it actually we do see uh, the OpenStack to be used often to deploy the, the infrastructure and program and provision, I should say, the, the infrastructure, and whatever goes on top, it, uh, it's, it could be Kubernetes, um, works just uh, very nicely. Yes. Hey, yeah. Charles, you've, you've been involved with OpenStack for, for many years. I, yes. you, this is, how many OpenStack summits? Uh, well, probably eight, 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 eight or more, yeah. How are you seeing the OpenStack community evolve? What are you, I know you've just arrived, we're day one here at this summit <laughs> in you know, beautiful Vancouver. But in terms of the, the energy of the community, the, the people who are here, uh, it's a little bit smaller this year, but it, you know, we've, I think other people here are actual users and actual deployers, so. Exactly. Yeah, any thoughts so, there? So this is perhaps the, well we went through a marketing hype, which, which is great, however what I would say, regardless of the event today, in general the OpenStack community is a lot more mature, it's a lot more uh, stable as well, and, and the product, uh, the, product the, the technology, the community, is, is, is more focused around solving real use cases and real problem. A couple of years ago there was a lot of interest, a lot of uh, hype, uh, you know, but it would have solved world, world hunger as well, right? <laughs> now I think it's very pointed, very precise, and uh, I'm actually, we're, Nuage is quite proud to be participating and contributing in that community because we're starting to see um, the technology really addressing key, key problems here. All right, mm -hmm. uh, Charles, last thing uh, I, I wanted to ask is the network sits in a very special place when you talk about really the multi-cloud world that customers yeah. are talking about. What are you seeing when it comes to that environment? Uh, you know, how do customers figure out where they put their applications? Are they moving uh, you know, you know, things or is, is it just kind of a heterogeneous but uh, still complicated world? Mm, they're still figuring out as yeah. well, right? I mean, it's a very dynamic environment, but I would say if I had to draw a conclusion, most of the customers are deploying the application on premise. They like to have either for storage, either for some of the uh, governance, uh, they do li like to have applications on premise. However, the multi-cloud scenario is often used in large banks to compute, or, or in large organization, to compute on a burst capability, right? The capability to say, hey, I need to have X compute power available for X time uh, is very appealing for them. And this is how most of the deployment of Nuage are, are used right now, is having doing the plumbing, the virtual plumbing inside a data center, and dynamically, based on demand, the capability to do the same networking policy, the same networking extension to one of the public cloud offering is very appealing because it's sporadic, it's a burst type of scenario. Yeah, especially see a lot of those service providers have that direct As well. capability, right? As well, correct, correct. Right. Uh, and it, it, you're right, that it can become a little bit complex when you have, uh, when you want to, uh, to deploy network, the same networking policies across on-premise and multiple cloud provider, and if you have interim service provider, then it becomes a little bit complicated to, to orchestrate all of it, and this is where SDN gives them that hardware abstraction and, and maintain the same networking policy. All right, well, Charles Furlan, appreciate the update on Nuage and all hey. of your viewpoints from, from the customers that you're seeing. My pleasure, for, thank for, you very much. For John Troyer, I'm Stu Miniman, back with more coverage here at the OpenStack Summit 2018 in Vancouver. Thanks for watching theCUBE.